Let me give you the... So let's, if possible, start with questions, including questions about the homework, especially. Are there any typos in the homework? I didn't find any. Yes. I didn't find all of them. All right. So I've been going through this stuff about spin zero and spin one half in some detail, possibly too much detail, and I really want to get out. I want to finish the spin one half stuff today, and then I'm going to try to lecture on a somewhat higher level in the sense that we've been down in the weeds with these issue two matrices and doing things with a great deal of detail. I think that it would be good to go up and view things somewhat from a higher level, which allows to cover more ground. So let me say where we were. I'm not quite certain what. Let's see. Where is the best place to? I've added a lot to these notes. So let me get to where we were, and then I'll proceed. This is good. This is worse. There may be some trouble. Okay. All right. Let me just say where we were. Namely, we had these spin matrices, and this is for the one-half zero representation. C plus P0 plus M minus P dot sigma all matched to P0 plus M. And I'm using here the Heston-Schroeder conventions. V, P, S, S prime, minus I, D plus. C plus and D plus are constants, which we're going to work out today. Whoops. Right. Okay. And then for the zero one-half representation, we have U of P and S. S prime is C minus P0 plus M plus P dot sigma S S prime divided by the same square root. And V, P, S, S prime is minus I, D minus P0 plus M plus P dot sigma sigma to S S prime over square root of P0. Okay. So these are our spin matrices. And what we mean here is, for example, that this U, P, S, S prime is V 
the spinner, the first one is for spin up, and the second one is, well, here, let me write it. What actually is going on here is we have UPS A, PS prime. Okay. And so this is this matrix UPS, which is a two-by-two matrix, and then we have this effectively a vector AP, S prime, so that's, so to speak, AP1, AP2. Okay. What are these annihilation operators correspond to? Right, right, right. And what do they correspond to? Like I'm just drawing what and what? Here, let me write down the fields then. The fields, the left-handed spinner, C of X, is going to be then the DQP over 2-pi cubed, and there's actually a 2 because there's a square root of 2P0 in this normalization. And so altogether that's P0, P0 plus M, and so this is then P0 plus M minus P dot sigma AP, E to the minus I PX minus I P0 plus M minus P dot sigma, sigma 2, A dagger P, E to the I PX. So that's the left-handed one. And then the right-handed one is the same thing here, and now it's just P0 plus M plus P dot sigma. Oh, and I left out, there would be a C, so let me, C plus here and T plus here. And then over here we would have C minus and then plus I P minus, let me make sure I've got this, no, it's actually minus I P minus. But P minus will turn out to be minus I. Okay, and let me, I've been in this, right, so we have a label here that's one half minus one half, effectively, and then a row label here, one half minus one half, and then a column label. So is this what the one and the two correspond to? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one half minus one half is what we're thinking of. Okay, so and I think maybe I should just remind us all that
All right, let's, let, let me just leave it at that. Um, okay, so now the question is, uh, what, what do we want these fields to satisfy? Well, what we want certainly is we want to have relativity. So we want the anti-commutator C of S with, let me call it, C sub T of Y, this to vanish if X minus Y squared in the Peskin notation is negative and, and in the Weinberg notation is positive. In other words, if these are space-like. But we also want other things. We want C sub S of X and C dagger T of Y to be zero, again, for space-like separations. Moreover, we also want zeta of to vanish at space-like separations, and also with its energy. Again, space-like separations. Moreover, we're going to want at equal times, we're going to want these guys to be zero and these guys to be effectively a delta, a delta function, chronic a delta in spin and a delta function in space. And the same thing here, this one's guys at equal times are going to be zero and this one's going to be a chronic a delta times a delta function in space. So, um, why are they all easy commutators? Ah, that's what we derived last time, remember? Since these are representing spin one half particles, we went through, we, we, we argued that the anti commutator would vanish. And we showed it to vanish uh, uh, between certain states, certain classes of states. I've improved and generalized that argument a little bit, and it's on the web page under, oddly enough, it's an example under the discussion of the rotation group. Okay. Um, and all right, so let me find uh, the appropriate place in these nodes that have gotten too big. All right, this is, I guess, uh, an appropriate. All right, let's look at C sub S of X, C sub T of Y, and uh, what is this going to be? Well, it's going to be an integral dqp and okay, this is all right. dqp 2 pi to the 6 actually because we also have a dqq and I'm going to put in 2p0 2q0. So this is just the fields and um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing the square root of 2p0 here. This square root of p0, of square root of 2p0 plus m, I'm putting under here and I'm calling that the u matrices, which are over there. So this, in other words, is um, the anti commutator here upss prime, aps prime, with. V Q T T prime A dagger or star if you like Q T prime E to the minus I T X minus Y and then plus the anti commutator of V P S S prime A dagger or a star P S prime with U Q T T prime A Q T prime E V I P X minus Y close right bracket. So so I'm 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 using two different notations here. This the idea here, let me just write it, was that C of X is equal to integral T Q P over two pi Q square root of 2p0. Um, oh, I left out the, C, the c's. Hold on. No, that 
was stupid. I left them out in one equation and they're in the other equation. Um, so this was this C, C with itself, so it'll be C plus D plus here. In the sense that this is C plus uh, U P S, if I put an S over here, S S prime, A P S prime, E to the minus I P X plus D plus V P S S prime, A that is an A. Don't the U's and the V's already have the C's and the D's in them? Okay, wait a second. Let me, let me, before I answer that, let me just finish this. What? Don't the U's and the V's already have the C plus and minus and the D plus and minus in them? Duh! Right. You're right. Bingo. Okay, so I'm writing in these notes. I'm, I'm unfortunately. Uh, all right, it's it's. I think that's actually kind of an unfortunate choice. Let me. I, I haven't been entirely consistent in my notes. Um, let me. Uh, let me uh, um, I think we want to define this that way. So I'll call this C plus and this C minus. And I'll call this D plus. I, I think that's it's better. Because the C plus and the D minus are going to go away, and we want to have something like that. Um, OK, so that's what C is. So you see, when you take the anti-commutator hitter of C of X sub S with C sub T, you've got the anti-commutator of the A's with the A's. Well, that's going to be 0. The A daggers with the A daggers, that's going to be 0. So then you just have the A's with the A daggers. And uh, that's what this term is. And then the A dag is with the A's, and that's what this term is. Okay. But though, but our commutation relations are A P S prime A dagger Q P prime is delta S at delta S P prime delta Q X P minus Q. So that's our anti-commutation relation. And consequently, uh, what we'll have here is C sub S of X, C sub T of Y, anti-commutative then can be C plus P plus integral P Q P over 2 pi q, 2p0, u sub p v transpose of p, e to the minus i p, x minus y, plus v p, u transpose p, e to the i p, x minus y. Now, UP, U, you transpose is pretty simple. Well, UV transpose is going to be P0 plus M minus P dot sigma. And then minus I sigma 2 transpose P0 plus M minus P dot sigma transpose. So what's happened to our Q integration variable? I, I would expect to see friend, it. Off friend, the delta function. God bless Dirac. Um, no, but even in this. Saved us. Right. Over here, we have a D, P, D, Q, but this commutation relation involves a delta Q to P minus Q and a 2 pi Q in the pest controller notation, which I left out. OK, but even in this expression, should there be any Q's in the exponentials? Brilliant. 
<coughs> minus IPX plus IQY minus IPX plus IQY. Thank you. That's worth two candies, but I don't know. I probably want to avoid that if we use it. This is a small candle anyway. Okay, so how does this work? Well, first of all, instead of writing this a million times, I'm going to use an eraser. And sigma 2 is anti-symmetric, so sigma 2 transpose cancels the transpose cancels the out, the minus. Okay, now, here, sigma 1 and sigma 3 are unaffected by transposition, but sigma 2 gets a minus on. On the other hand, when we pull the sigma 2 through, we flip the sign of sigma 1 and sigma 3, but not sigma 2. And so this is all together equal to P0 plus M minus P dot sigma I out in front. P0 plus M plus P dot sigma of sigma 2 divided by 2 P0 plus M. And now this gives us P0 plus M squared minus P vector squared I sigma 2 over 2 P0 plus M. And um, so this gives us I P0 squared minus P vector squared, I'm moving that in, plus 2 P0 M plus M squared. Okay. Over time sigma 2 over 2 P0 plus M. And now this is just M squared, so I can put a 2 here. I'll put the 2 there. And I'll get rid of this. And now this thing can be factored. It's 2M times P0 plus M. And now you see everything cancels, and this is nothing more than IM sigma 2. Question? It's in the notes, by the way. But. All right. Moreover, if that's UV transpose, then VU transpose is IM sigma 2 transpose, which is minus IM sigma 2. All right, so now where were we? That means that C sub S of X, C T of Y is C plus D plus I M sigma 2 sub S T times integral D Q P 2 pi Q 2 P 0 e to the minus I P X minus Y uh, once we have this delta function P minus Q, of course, the, this goes back to what I originally wrote. And so, and then the minus sign, e to the I P, X minus 1. Okay. This thing is called delta of X minus Y. So this is I M C plus D plus Sigma 2, let me leave it in matrix form, delta x minus y. And this is a Lorentz invariant function that vanishes at space like separation. We analyze that in the spin zero case. The reason it vanishes at space like separations is this is just a function of p squared, p, three vector p squared. 
So over here we go to a Lorenz, it's obviously a Lorenz invariance. We go to a Lorenz frame where if x, oh, if x and y are space, if x and y are space-like separated, x minus y being space-like, we go to a frame where x0 equals y0, then these are just three vector things. And because this only involves p squared, we can rotate p to minus p, or replace p to minus p in this thing, and then the two things are identical and they cancel. So that's why it vanishes to space-like separations. So what we've got then is no constraint at all on C plus or D plus, but we verify uh, this relation. And um, in fact, you can imagine that if I had done this for the case of the right-handed spinners, the only thing that would be different effectively would be that we have pluses here, and it would work out. So I think you all would accept that we've got this one. Right. Although in the notes, I actually went through everything. All right, so now let's try, let's look at the anti commutator C sub S at X and C dagger sub T at Y. Um, boy, I'm looking at my notes here, and it's it's, it's absolutely um, scary the number of substrates. Okay, is that, and then what we have is the. Well, I wrote it as one gigantic anti-commutator. So it's C plus U P S S prime A P S prime e to the minus I P X plus D plus D P S S prime A dagger S prime E T I P X and I commutator that with C plus star U star Q T T prime A dagger Q T prime E D I Q Y plus D plus star U star Q T T prime A A Q T prime e to the minus i q y. And we see that we don't need this left bracket. Okay, so once again, the what, what anti-commutators don't vanish. We have this one with this, and then we have this one with that. And so, taking advantage of everything and going to matrix notation, we have dqp over 2 pi q, 2p0. This is this nice Lorentz invariant form of dqp over p0. And now what we have is c plus squared times u to p u dagger p, e to the minus i p x minus y plus D plus squared V plus V plus dagger E to the I P X minus Y. So we used up the key integration. Right, right, right. And that all that 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 set Q equal to P kicked out of two pi Q. It set uh, it set um, well, what is it? S prime equal to T prime. All right, so what is UP, UP dagger? Well, this, this is very simple because you see it's just this thing over here. 
It's just that this times its adjoint, but this is a Hermitian matrix. So this is really very simple. It's just P0 plus M minus P dot sigma squared over 2 P0 plus M. And now if you do the arithmetic, you get P0 squared plus 2M P0 plus M squared plus P vector squared minus 2 P0 plus M P dot sigma. And it's all that divided by P0 plus M times 2. Okay. Now, what happens is you can replace this by P0 squared. And now we have 2 P0 squared. And then we can effectively factor the thing. We've got 2 P0 squared plus 2 M P0. And then minus 2 P0 plus M P dot sigma again over this 2 P0 plus M. Okay. This thing here is 2 P0 times P0 plus M. And so we can factor this. There's a common factor in the numerator of 2 P0 plus M cancels the denominator. And what's left is P0 minus P dot sigma. Similarly, and I don't think we need to go through all the details, P sub P, V sub P dagger is P0 minus P dot sigma. This is a little trickier because there are sigma 2s. So let me put in a little bit. I'll fill in one line. It's minus I P0 plus M minus P dot sigma, sigma 2, then times I sigma 2, P0 plus M minus P dot sigma, all that divided by 2 P0 plus M. So that's what it is. And then that collapses to that. All right. So that's that. And so what does this tell us then? This tells us that the anti-commutator of C sub S sub X with C sub T of Y adjoint is integral DQP 2 pi Q 2 P0 P0 minus P dot sigma. And then it's just C plus squared even minus I P X minus Y plus D plus squared even I P X minus Y. That's what it is. All right. Now you might get nervous and say, gee, we wanted a minus sign here. But, but, this can be re-expressed as a derivative. So we re-express this as as I, the identity, D by DX0 plus I grad dot sigma on integral DQP 2 pi Q 2 P0. But now it's C plus squared E minus I P X minus Y minus C plus squared E minus I P. In other words, you need a minus sign here because when the derivatives hit, you want to get the same plus P. And so you have a minus. And the P dot sigma, the P is a is a three vector, right? Or a normalized. Yes, 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 yes. Always P 
dot segment. In fact, the convention that I'm trying to respect is that uh, I'm writing Lorentz in a product of x with y is just xy or xp. And if I put in the dot, it means a three vector. OK. Well, it's now we get our first constraint on these c plus and d pluses. Obviously, we want d plus equal to c plus in absolute value. So we said d plus equal c plus. And then we get this to be c plus squared i d0 plus rad dot sigma this invariant, Lorentz invariant function, delta by two. Now, uh, we know this vanishes at space-like separation, so this thing is zero at space-like separation. OK, so we've effectively verified this one. And you'll believe me that we've also done this one. All right, now does somebody want candy? We verified it for this choice of D, right? Oh, that's right, absolutely. But didn't we choose that D in order to get this anti-commutation relation? I mean, we chose D to be that, right? In order to yeah, get no, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be candy. We well, can give it away to somebody who's too shy to ask. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, didn't we make this choice of D so that we get this, the delta here? Delta of x Yes. We well, made which this is what gives us the zero over here, right? What? It gives us that anti-commutation relation and space-like separations. Right. It, we chose D plus in absolute value equal to C plus in absolute value equal to get this. Right. But we didn't have any constraint to get that. And um, when I said that we get this, we get this without any constraints. But in order to get this, we need d minus equal to c minus. Okay, because the minus signs go with the right-hand spinners. So it's by the way, if you find this a little bit confusing, let me admit something. I screwed up in my thinking about this on a Thursday or Friday when I tried to derive all these things that I was putting on the board today. And I somehow got the wrong spinners in. Anyway, I got the spinners wrong. And it took me forever to get that straight. Um, it seems like the second set, I mean, whereas in the, in the top set here, we didn't have to make any assumptions about D and C. We just got that delta immediately. Then we get that that's zero. It's that's right. right. And that's also true here. Right. But now for the bottom equation, C and the bottom, the bottom equation, equation is are, something. are sort of arbitrary. I mean, we could have made any choice for D and gotten anything on the right-hand side. It was only because what we... Are you, what are you talking about? D times value has to be... D plus has to be equal C plus in absolute value. Right. Well, we only made that assumption because we wanted to get that form. Right. We could have made any assumption and gotten any other thing on the right-hand side there. But we want to get We've got to get a zero. We're trying to prove this, right? We've got to get a zero. It's got to be the advantage of space-like separation. But I mean, it's different from the from the der derivation over here, where we did get zero without making any assumptions. That's it's true. We had to make but, we got, but, 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 but we want to have. Sure, we want. We to want to learn it. something about c plus d plus c minus d minus. We don't want to have to spend the rest of our lives doing physics with c plus and d plus all over <laughs> But I'm right that it's it's a different. It's different. It's a different question. Right. This. The first happened naturally, happened almost automatically. This happened with a little bit, it happens with a constraint. And what we want this constraint. OK. Now, we're not done, though, because after all, we want more than that. We're going to have a theory with c and zeta, c dagger and zeta dagger. So we know 
we want not only for the C's to behave with each other and the Zetas to behave with each other, but we want the C's and the Zetas to behave with each other. All right. Now, so let me find out. Let me find the place in the notes where this is done. All right, here we go. Let's let's do C for zeta. So we want left hand to spin it to end the commute with right hand. So we have C to pass. Did we throw that last time as well? Mm -hmm. We 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 showed that last time as well. What? Did everyone? Do we want the left handed and the right handed spinners to anti commute yeah. and space like separation? Yeah. Oh, oh, for sure, yeah. Right. I mean, it's just a rule that you want any spin one half or any fermionic field to anti commute, right? Okay, you're getting on something that's a little bit subtle and that I haven't thought about in a while, but the answer is yes. And um, in this particular case, it's absolutely, we absolutely need this to happen for the reasons you're describing because these, part, these fields are made out of the same particle creation and annihilation operators. So we don't have any wiggle room. Where you do have wiggle room is if you have one Fermi field that refers to one kind of particle and another Fermi field that refers to another kind of particle, now I take it back. I think he's right. <laughs> I think the argument that I went through last time does that. No. So you're saying if you no, it doesn't. Yeah. Remember, remember last time we were able to. We we had this. We sort of had, in the simplest case, vacuum, vacuum, and then we had, um, say, C of X. Say one half zeta. Oops. Let's suppose we had zeta one half minus x. Okay. And now we stick in the rotation operators. Well, what we're going to get is c one half minus x zeta x one half. You see, and this isn't these guys switched around. And we, so we can't, with a rotation, change a C field into a zeta field. And, and we certainly, let's put this way, we certainly couldn't if, um, if these were referring to different kinds of particles. So say, that, would, that would be an internal symmetry transformation. But what we do, what one does in physics generally is say, well, we have a choice. We can have them commute or anti-commute. And the choice that everybody makes is you have all Fermi fields anti-commute and space-like separations. You have all Bose fields commute and space-like separations. But that's a little bit apart from what I'm talking about now. And here, we're talking about the same kind of particles. We don't need an internal symmetry transformation, so what he said is wrong. Okay, anyway, back at the ranch. Um, we have here C plus, the positive frequency part, sub S of X, plus D plus, the negative frequency part, sub S of X. Anti commutator with C minus zeta plus T of Y plus D minus zeta minus T of Y. This is the anti commutator that we're dealing with. Okay, well, C plus, if it's going to cause any trouble, it's when it's dealing with zeta minus and C minus with zeta plus. And so what this gives us is C plus D minus 
the anti-cone favor C plus S of X with zeta minus T of Y and then plus C minus D plus the anti-commutator C minus S with zeta plus T of Y. All right. So let's look at these one at a time. The anti-commutator is a positive frequency part of C sub S with the negative frequency part of zeta T of Y. All right. It's this thing again. D Q Q. D Q Q. 2 pi to the 6. Root 2 P 0. 2 Q 0. All right. Then we have an anti-commutator U. And this is, now we've got this, the problem that this is, and I should have adopted a better notation because we're using U and V for the, we're using U for the spin, for the spin matrix for those 1 half 0 and the 0 1 half representations. And the same thing for V. So I'm having to add this 1 half 0. P S S prime. A P S prime. E to the minus I P X. Commutator V. And now this is 0 1 half because it comes from a zeta. Q T T prime. A dagger Q T prime. P to the I Q Y. Anti-commutator. All right. Well, once again, this gives us a double function of Q minus P of 2 pi Q. The prime of delta S prime T prime. And that means that what we get here is integral D Q P 2 pi Q 2 P 0. And it's now U 1 half 0. V transpose 0 1 half P P Q minus I P X minus 1. Okay. And so as not to waste time, let me give you what C minus S X zeta plus, which is the other term, is. And it is the same integral as what D Q P pi Q 2 P 0. V 1 half 0 P U 0 1 half transpose P E to the I P X minus 1. And let me get the next page. All right. Now you've seen this, how this matrix multiplication goes. It's pretty straightforward. V 1 half 0 U transpose 0 1 half. After you've done the arithmetic, it's minus I P 0 minus P dot sigma sigma 2. And let me see. I've somehow skipped something here. That's this one. I must have written down what the other one is. Hold on. Yeah, I just didn't do it explicitly. I mean, I did it explicitly in the notes, but I didn't write it down explicitly. So U 1 half 0 V 0 1 half transpose is I P 
minus P dot sigma, sigma 2. Okay. So altogether then, the anti-commutator C sub S of X with zeta sub T of Y is I integral P cubed P to pi cubed to P0, P0 minus P dot sigma, sigma 2, ST, to the minus I times X minus Y times C plus D minus, minus E to the I P, X minus Y, C minus P plus. And the minus sign came from this here. Okay. So what we want then is, we've got a derivative, this is going to turn into a derivative, and that's going to flip this sign, but we want to preserve the minus sign, so we need this to be minus that. So the constraint we get is C minus D plus is minus C plus D minus. And in that case, this thing is C plus D minus with a minus sign. D0 plus del dot sigma, sigma 2, ST, del dot X minus Y. And again, we get the advantage of space like separation. So we get a real constraint here. Why do we want C minus? C minus D plus to be minus C plus D minus? Right. Because when we turn this into a derivative, that puts an extra minus sign. All right. So okay. So what we've got then is we we've done this. Now the next one, I guess I'll use this board space here. Um, C sub s of x. Zeta dagger now, T of Y. Let me, I mean, we don't want to spend our lives doing this, so let me tell you what this answer is. This turns out to be. This turns out to be M integral dqp 2 pi q 2 p0 and it's c plus c minus star e to the minus i p x minus y plus d plus d minus star e to the i p x minus y and this will equal C plus C minus star M delta of X minus Y if D plus D minus star equals minus C plus C minus star. So we have another constraint there. Now, so think about that while I erase this. I really think we'd be so much better if we shared this building with the English department instead of having the class of people writing on the board essentially. All right, so okay, so I think we're basically done. So our conditions, oh, I, 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 let's see, I left out one condition and I, namely that what we want is we want 
for equal times, we want this thing to be a delta 1. Now, um, where is our expression for that? Well, it's over here. All right. If we go back here, we said C plus was D plus. And so let me get rid of this and rid of this and just put a C plus squared out in the front. Okay. Now, what happens to the Z0 term? The D0 term pulls down a P0 from here. It pulls down a P0 with the opposite sign over here. You then have the two P0s cancel. You have DQP. And at equal times, the time part cancels. And you just have E to the I P dot X minus Y. That's a delta function of X minus Y. And the, the I's work out. This term actually vanishes. And so as long as C plus is in modulus 1, you get the correct relation. So these are our relations then. C plus equals D plus equals 1 equals C minus equals D minus. The absolute value. The other constraints were C minus D plus equals minus C plus D minus and D plus D minus star is minus C plus C minus star. And I think those are the only constraints. Now, it turns out that um, this tells us, of course, that these things are all unimodular. So if I let C minus be E D I P and D plus be E to the I C, then this equation is minus and C plus be E D I theta and D minus be E D I omega. That's this equation. On the other hand, this equation is E to the I C for D plus e to the minus i omega equals minus e to the i theta e to the minus i b. Well, looking at those two equations, you see that they're the same. Okay. In other words, if you multiply this equation by e to the minus i omega e to the minus i b, you get that equation. So there's only one constraint. We have four phases one constraint. The natural thing then is to set C plus equals C minus equals 1, D plus equals minus D minus equals 1. So you can do that uh, because we have three free phases. Now you might ask, why do we have three three phases. What do they mean physically or mathematically or where did they come from? Well, one of them comes from where we got this creation operator. We said that the state P, S, was A dagger in Heston Schroeder notation A dagger sub P, S on the vacuum. But a state in quantum mechanics has an arbitrary phase. So the creation operator intrinsically has an arbitrary phase associated with it. So that's one angle, that's one phase that's arbitrary. Moreover, we've been saying that these fields, the left-handed spinner C and the right-handed spinner Zeta, have to do these various things. Well, there's an arbitrary phase for C and there's an arbitrary phase for Zeta. And the only place where the anti-commutator gives something non-zero on the right-hand side that we care about is when it's C with C dagger, zeta with zeta dagger, and the phase goes away. So there are th the three arbitrary phases then are the phase of this state, the phase of the left-handed field, and the phase of the right-handed field. Since those are arbitrary, we can choose them. 
so as to clean up our notation. And so that's what everybody does. And so now, maybe I should go over here and fix these things in. Well, this one doesn't mean anything, but this one over here, you know, I think I may be able to finish this whole chapter. There's C plus, that's just going to be one. D plus is one. Uh, C minus is one. Ah, uh, D minus is minus one, so there's a plus here. So that's what our fields are going to look like. Now, there's some, after we've done all this work, there's some low-hanging fruit that we can pick. As I started to pick it this afternoon, then I realized it didn't hang quite as low as I thought. But um, it still uh, is accessible in uh, 16 minutes, I hope. So let's just see, where are we here? Well, the first thing we can do is it's natural to put the two fields, C and Zeta, in one full component field. This is um, normally called a Majorana field because so far we've only talked about one kind of particle, which is generally be a neutral particle. Anyway, so this field uh, chi, which is then C zeta, is this integral dqp 2 pi q root 2 p 0, and it's u ps a p s p minus i p x plus v p s a dagger p s I P X. This is the way I've written it there. And um, I think I think what I've done now is I've changed a little bit and I'm seeing now that in other words, what I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, since C plus is 1 and everything, I can of course erase this, and I can erase that. And D plus is 1. Well, C minus cancels also, so let's just write it like that. So, those, so that's what we have. And now, these things are now four spinners as opposed to two spinners. And so this U P S S prime is one over square root of two P zero plus M and it's P zero plus M minus P dot sigma P zero plus M plus P dot sigma and V P S S prime. So that uh, it's minus I over the same square root 2 P0 plus M. And now it's P0 plus M minus P dot sigma sigma 2. And there's the minus from the uh, D minus. P0 plus M plus P dot sigma, sigma 2. All right. Another way of writing this is to say that this is 1 over the same square root, but now it's P0 plus M minus P dot sigma 0, 0, P0 plus M plus P dot sigma. And now, a sort of vector of two two by two matrices. And the 
Another way of writing that is one over the same square root m plus p slash down to zero i i. And similarly, this thing, let me in fact abbreviate, it's minus i over the square root, of course, is 2 to 0 plus m. m plus p slash down to 0, and now it's sigma 2 minus sigma 2. All right, now. What you notice, though, is that this quantity here is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1 of down to 0, and sigma 2 minus sigma 2 is minus sigma 2 minus sigma 2. It's an eigenvector of down to 0 with eigenvalue minus 1. So we can rewrite this as 1 over the square root m plus p slash on i i. And we can rewrite this as 1 over the square root m minus p slash on sigma 2 minus sigma. And that means that our minor on the field has a four component spinner can be written as PQP q 2 root P0, P0 plus M, so I'm sort of putting all that stuff together. M plus P slash, remember the notation A slash is P mu gamma mu sum of A A gamma A with you want. I I A P E minus I P X plus M minus P slash sigma two minus sigma two P dagger P E the I P X. Alright. Now you can easily verify if you just keep everything straight and get all the minus signs right. That this is I P slash even minus I P X, and similarly minus P slash e to the I P X is equal to I P slash e to the I P X. And so this higher on the field. is in fact m, m plus i d slash phi of x, where phi of x is just this crazy d q p 2 pi q 2 root p 0, p 0 plus m. And now it is I I A P. So most of the complexity is gone of the spinners plus sigma two minus sigma two A dagger P I P X. So this is what the field phi is. And now we see why the Majorana spinner has to satisfy the Dirac equation. Namely, because i e slash minus m on phi of x is i d slash minus m on i d slash plus m phi of x, where phi of x is this four-component spinner 
which satisfies the Klein-Gordon equation. In other words, when you write this out, this is simply minus the details are in the notes explicitly. Box plus M squared, phi of X, but phi depends on X only through P dot X, and so it automatically satisfies the Klein-Gordon equation. So by construction, the Majorana spin satisfies the Dirac equation. Okay, so that was one piece of low-hanging fruit. The other piece of low-hanging fruit is that now that we have the phase convention straight, namely that there are three arbitrary phases, but we just set all equal to one, and one that's not arbitrary, we set equal to minus one, we can actually, I don't know, I don't think I have time to show it. It's in the notes, and I think I'm going to skip it in the lectures. We can actually show that I sigma 2, C star, which is the complex conjugate of the thing considered still as a vector, is zeta. And moreover, that C is minus I sigma 2, zeta star. Remember, in the notes I said that if C was a left-handed spinner, then sigma 2, C star would be a right-handed spinner. Well, so is I sigma 2, C star. And similarly. So, in other words, these relations that relate the left-handed to the right-handed are a consequence of the phase convention, and the construction of the Majorana field, and also they're consistent with the Lorentz transformation properties of these spinners. So I'm going to leave that also to the notes for detail. And the next thing, then, is to say, well, if you have two Majorana spinners of the same mass, combine them into one Dirac field, and the Dirac field psi, then, will be 1 over root 2, pi 1 plus I, pi 2 of X. Now, since pi 1 and pi 2 are built from particles that have nothing to do with each other, they just have the same mass, the field pi 1 will anti-commute with pi 2, or we can say that it anti-commutes with pi 2, and it will anti-commute with its adjoint, because these creation operators and the liaison operators have nothing to do with each other. That means that psi inherits all the good properties, namely that psi A of X, psi B of Y will vanish for space-like separations, and moreover, that psi A of X, psi B of Y, anti-commutator, this delta dagger, this delta A, B, delta Q, X minus Y, for equal times. All right. So I think we're essentially done with the tail here, and then next time I'm going to try to move somewhat faster, not faster in the sense of whizzing through the stuff. I still hope that everything that I say will be clear, and for goodness sakes, ask questions, and I'll continue to bring the chocolate. But what I'm going to try to do is, I think I've been way down in the weeds here with the Dirac stuff, and it seems to me, the reason I did that is that, well, frankly, when I was a graduate student, we sort of whizzed through the Dirac stuff, and I just thought it was magic, and I just could never figure it out, and I never understood how these things transformed on the Lorentz transformations, or why anything was what it is, until I read some of Weinberg's papers. And so I thought, that's why I've gone through this. But I don't think we need to be down at this level of detail for the rest of the class. Thank you. Thank you.
cost or just reach it and get the bottom line. And you know what I would like you to do, if you could all send me an email saying what your main interest area is, that will help me plan the rest of this semester because um, there are options for different things. If you guys are all going to do quantum information theory, then I should cover one set of topics. If you're all going to do high energy theoretical physics, another set of topics. If you're going to do high energy experimental physics, another set of topics. So it's, it's, there's, there's some arbitrariness here in the topics. And um, so, um, in fact, we, we could do this in real time. What are you going to do? What are you doing? What are you making uh, interesting? Uh, and it's okay to say you haven't chosen that. High energy theory. High energy theory. High energy theory. Quantum representation. Quantum information. Does this matter? Theoretical. I have quantum information, but I have quantum information, but I'd like to hear about if it does matter, actually. Quantum information. High energy experimental. High energy experimental. Oh, you, what's your sort of knowledge of what? Integrable system. See, integrable system. So you're doing real hardcore mathematical physics. And what about you? All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. All right, so I see there's a question playing in here. Is it, are you going to teach your class next semester? I'm certainly willing to. We, but we have to have enough people uh, sign up to convince Finley to schedule it. Schedule it. Monthly. A, a, a second semester of quantum computing. Okay. So I can promise you, if I take it, it'll be you know, generously graded uh, with chocolate and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, all right, all right. Let's turn the tape off. And,